Hi everyone. I can't believe it's already been three months since my last stats update, so it's probably time that I did the autumn statistics for generation, consumption and uh, the bill that we've had for our energy use uh, from September through to November. And uh, you may have noticed that we've had a slight rearrange in the office. So uh, you can see now Kat is uh, sitting behind me there. Uh, she used to be over to the side, um, closer to the window, but uh, yeah, we had a bit of a rearrange um, and it's working a lot better actually. So she's probably gonna be uh, appearing whenever I do these office-based videos. Um, so yeah, that's all a bit of fun. But uh, with that out of the way, shall we get on with the actual statistics? So this is the generation for our east-west split array, totaling 6.84 kilowatt peak, um, half and half on each side. Um, and you can see that uh, actually the September generation this year of uh, 459.6 kilowatt hours was quite similar to the first year we had it installed. Um, a little bit up from last year, um, but October was absolutely awful, 167.3 kilowatt hours, which is way down on where it should be, which is, you can see this blue shaded area is what we would expect based on the PVGIS estimates. And then November was back up again into sort of normal territory, around about 135 uh, kilowatt hours um, for November. So a little bit up from last year, but um, roughly what we would expect. Um, but yeah, overall, uh, not great compared to the summer. You can see in the summer, we absolutely smashed it. We had way above what we would normally expect um, all the way through from, well, from April. In fact, March all the way through to August, we were above what we would expect for the year. So we're well up, you know, for the, for the year in total. Um, but yeah, the last three months haven't been particularly spectacular. And then at the end of February this year, we had an additional six panels added to the south segments of our roof. Um, and those were a, a total of 2.76 uh, kilowatt peak. So six panels compared to 18 on the main array. Um, but because the panels themselves are a bit more powerful and they're facing south, we actually have had pretty decent generation. Certainly over the summer, it's been great um, all the way through. Once again, more than we would expect. And then in September, back to roughly what we would normally expect for um, uh, this time of year. So we've actually got two uh, sub arrays, shall we say. Um, I've got a whole playlist uh, covering the details of the experiment that I'm running, um, comparing a string inverter against microinverters. So for the string inverter, those are the green bars, and we generate 125.4 kilowatt hours um, in September, but the microinverters that we have on the other three panels generated slightly more, 132.3. And then in October, once again, way down on what we would expect, 60.4 60 for, 60 for the string inverter, 64.6 for the microinverters. November, back to roughly what we would expect, 65.2 for the string and 66.8 for the microinverters. So once again, the microinverters, roughly 5% more than the string inverter. That seems to be a pretty consistent pattern uh, throughout the year. I will do a complete summary. Once we've got a full year's worth of data, I'll do a complete uh, breakdown of the uh, this experiment I'm running on these, on these south arrays. Um, but uh, I'll leave it there for now uh, for this particular video. And if we put all three arrays in together, this is what we get. So last year obviously was just the east-west array. Um, that's what's shown over on the left-hand side here. And then from March onwards, we've got the addition of the two new south arrays. And uh, as you can see, when you combine them together, October, just awful. Just the worst month. I can't believe it. Um, but yeah, thankfully back uh, on par in November. Um, but as I said before, overall, we're doing pretty pretty well actually for the year. Um, can't complain for one duff month out of all of that lot. Um, so yeah, that's all the generation. Let's move on to the other stuff. But before that, a quick intermission to ask you to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Actually, a decent number of the viewers of my videos don't subscribe. Um, so um, yeah, if you do watch them regularly and get um, benefit from them, yeah, feel free to hit that subscribe button. It helps the channel out. Right, on to the other stuff. And actually one last chart before we move on to the other statistics. This is the generation in terms of uh, the kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak of installed capacity. So um, the orange is the east-west split array. And then obviously, once again, the green is the string inverter on the south roof. And the yellow is the end phase, the um, microinverters on the south roof. And you can see that um, throughout the year, the east-west array varies quite considerably from summer to winter. Um, but uh, this is the time where the um, south arrays starts doing um, a lot better relatively compared to 
the east-west. So because they're facing south, they catch that winter sun a little bit better. And we've got quite a steep pitch actually on the uh, the south-facing roof. So um, they do uh, quite well actually when uh, when there's a little bit of low sun. Um, and you can see that actually they're doing significantly better in terms of kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak um, for certainly November, doing it exceptionally well, well over double what, we, what we're getting for the east-west array. So whereas in the summer we were getting roughly the same, the, uh, the east-west array is dropping off quite a lot now, but we're at least keeping a decent amount from the, uh, the south arrays, which is helping quite a lot, certainly when it comes to supporting our heating on those nice sunny days when it's sort of crisp and cold outside, but still bright with lots of sunshine. So that really helps us. So speaking of heating, this is what our heating load has been like uh, for the last few years. And the uh, interesting ones uh, for the purposes of this video are the purple bars here on the left hand side for September, October and November. You can see actually that we've been using quite a lot of heating in particular in October relative to what we would expect. Um, it was, um, yeah, it was really cold. It started out pretty mild the first half, but then it got really cold in the second half. And actually the same pattern happened in November. It was uh, pretty mild to start with and then became quite cold with a few cold snaps towards the end of the uh, of that month and you can see in both of those months we used more heating than we would expect. I think we've been a little bit more um, using the heating slightly more than we did last year anyway perhaps. I'm not entirely sure. I would have to do um, the whole comparison I did um, comparing the temperature against what we what we used but I, I'm not sure I can be bothered to do that again a third time um, having done it last year and then a couple of years prior to that so um, I'm I'm just gonna ass assume that if it's in the right ballpark then you know nothing crazy is going on um, but yeah we'll, we'll see how December goes so far it's been a little bit milder again at the start of December so it's gonna be interesting to see how the winter pans out and um, yeah, if we get this battery from Gary that uh, that I mentioned in the in my previous video, um, we might actually use the heating a bit more anyway, just because we happen to have the capacity. So that might change things somewhat. But um, yeah, there's a uh, un we're unlikely to get that installed until maybe mid January anyway. So um, yeah, I guess we'll find out as and when we get that extra battery capacity um, and see if that changes our behaviour very much or not. And then if we look at all of the rest of the consumption that we've been uh, using over the last few months, you can see that um, you know September, the heating wasn't really on, um, only just started um, t uh, the last few days of September. So that's um, not much to chat about, 26.6 kilowatt hours. But yeah, rapidly shoots up through October and November. And you can see that actually um, October and November this year, we used a fair bit more in total compared to what we did last year. So over here is uh, the, the October and November um, values for last year. You can see 465 compared to this year, 608 for October. And then last year's November was 841 compared to 996 uh, for this year. But at least part of that, obviously other than the heating, was um, our EV use. We used a huge amount of the EV uh, this uh, last November compared to the previous year. So, you know, we're pretty much averaging less than 100 kilowatt hours most months, but you can see from sort of April onwards, I guess we've been using the EV quite a bit more. And in fact, November this year, we're up to 184 kilowatt hours. So uh, yeah, lots of long trips for various reasons. And um, the hot water, about 53 uh, kilowatt hours, that's pretty um, normal. In fact, it's very similar to last November's, um, October 44, a bit lower actually, um, uh, a bit higher than last October. I think we, we actually went away for a little bit um, last October, so that's probably why. Um, September, yeah, about the same, actually a little bit lower than, than last year. Um, all of the rest, much the same. Um, we've started to put the towel rails on again, obviously, but uh, that's not really taking much power. Um, and we're actually not really using the dehumidifiers either. I found a better solution for um, for trying to control the uh, the humidity, um, or, well, or at least preventing condensation, because we had we've got these horrible metal window frames, and they're really annoying. And that's why I was using the dehumidifiers sort of last autumn to try and just reduce the uh, the uh, humidity and uh, condensation on those window frames. But I've uh, found a better solution for that this year. Um, and uh, I think that that's going to mean that we don't need the dehumidifiers quite so much. Um, but yeah, that's probably enough talk of stuff that's not being used. Um, yeah, you can see that uh, yeah, we're generally using a little bit more um, heating, obviously, as I, as I mentioned. But otherwise, it's uh, still pretty much within the realms of what I would expect for this time of year. But how are we doing in terms of net consumption? Um, so this chart is uh, an interesting one I introduced a little while ago. It's the rolling annual net consumption, um, by which I mean it's the uh, sum total over the last 12 months of our uh, 
generation subtracted away from the sum total of the last 12 months of our consumption. So this gives you an idea of how much we're generating relative to how much we're consuming and it's a rolling 12 month window. So I, uh, for each data point here, it basically sums up the total of um, all of the consumption and all of the generation over the last 12 months. And you can see since we had the new South Arrays installed um, at the end of um, February, from then on, our rolling net consumption has dropped considerably. So this is the extra generation that have been that's been added by those new South Arrays has meant that uh, our net consumption has plummeted and we very, very nearly hit zero um, in September. But because of the somewhat higher uh, heating loads that we needed over the last uh, couple of months, um, it's just jumped up a little bit and it's now hovering around, what's this value now? 213 kilowatt hours net consumption um, over the last couple of months, 207 uh, in uh, November. So depending on what happens with our heating load um, over the winter, um, I expect we I'm hoping that we're going to we're going to dip down below zero. But uh, we shall see. Let's see what the weather um, <laughs> has in store for us over winter. And finally, how have our bills from Octopus looked over the last three months? Well, in uh, September, we were still um, in credit by a decent healthy amount, £71.59 in credit for uh, September. Then in October, it was the first uh, positive month um, since uh, we had the uh, the new uh, South Arrays installed. So we actually owed Octopus £9.61. And then in November, we owed Octopus £59.13. But if you add up September, October and November, we actually come out in credit only just at uh, to the tune of £2.85. So extremely close to a net zero bill for the autumn. Um, but uh, yeah, obviously over uh, the course of the, the last 12 months, we're actually um, uh, averaging, well, we're, we're, we've got a um, an annual bill of minus £311.84. So uh, yeah, we're in credit um, f if you take the last 12 months of, of bills into consideration. So uh, yeah, I'm uh, very pleased with that. Um, and actually, if I if we show you the uh, rolling annual bill, so this is very similar to the, the um, rolling net consumption chart that I showed um, a minute ago, but this is now in terms of money instead of kilowatt hours. Um, but yeah, this is how we're able to get a negative bill because our our net consumption is so close to zero, but because we're able to, essentially most of our consumption is at seven pence per kilowatt hour because we can charge up really cheap um, using the uh, Intelligent Go uh, off-peak rate of seven pence per kilowatt hour. And then most of our generation, if we don't use it in the house, goes back out to the grid at 15 pence per kilowatt hour. We actually earn more from, from what we generate um, than what we need, than what we have to pay for what we consume. So we've got that that sort of uh, arbitrage um, and that's allowed us to um, leverage that to get an, a, a negative bill. So uh, the rolling negative rolling annual bill uh, is now minus, minus £311.84 uh, and uh, I think that's basically going to plateau now. It's going to sort of um, level off a little bit. It might improve a little bit more. We may hit minus £400. We shall see. Uh, I'm not holding my breath, but um, it certainly looks like it's starting to level off a bit now. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm very pleased with that overall. I think uh, uh, we're in a really good spot. Um, even if the, the tariff rates change a little bit, um, I think we're still going to be in a decent position given that we're so close to a, to a, a, a net uh, zero um, annual consumption. We should be pretty good for uh, always more or less always having um, a net zero annual bill that's uh, that's the idea anyway we shall see whether or not that manifests in practice if you're not already with octopus and you like the idea of some of these interesting smart tariffs that they've got available then please do feel free to use my referral link i'll put that above my head right now you'll get 50 pounds credited to your account if you do that and i'll also get 50 pounds credited to my account so i would certainly appreciate it if you used my code that'd be brilliant thank you very much um but otherwise uh, yeah that's it from me today um and i hope you enjoyed all of that and seeing cat in the uh, in the background there uh i'll see you in the next video <laughs> bye cat bye everyone